Welcome back to wagertalk.com. Saturday college football action. This is going to be Brian Leonard's best bet, and we're going to take a look at Kansas State and Texas San Antonio. And Brian, the first thing I got to say about this game before I kick it to you, they need to take the whoever did the scheduling for Texas San Antonio, they got to go out and give him a beating. I don't know <laughs> what he did with the schedule the first three weeks at Arizona, then at home to Kansas State, and then back out on the road to Oklahoma State. I know they're getting some nice paydays for these games, but boy, they're going to take some beatings. We see this a lot when you get the smaller conference schools, the Sun Belts and the like. Uh, they do take some beatings, and the MAC does that too a lot of times. Um, but it's interesting that you have a Kansas State team wins 34 to nothing. But if you take a look at the stats, I think they only outgained the opposition by 69 yards. Uh, Schneider's one of those coaches who's going to get on his team. He doesn't care that he won 34 to nothing. He's going to come down on them because they didn't play well at all. Uh, Ertz got hurt in that game. They had Brian on the backup quarterback. But um, I'll, I'll throw a name out here. Uh, it's real popular on the Internet. Kelly in Vegas. She was at the seminar this last week on, on, uh, down at the Westgate. And Kelly knows Kansas State better than anybody that I've ever met. And I asked her, I said, what do you think about these quarterbacks? And she said they didn't even know coming into the season who their starters were going to be. There wasn't an outstanding quarterback. So here we've got the quarterback being knocked out. People are giving extra points because they're to the backup quarterback. And really, from what I've read, there's really not much difference between the two. And so we're getting a little bit of line advantage there. And you know, Kansas State played in this building in the Alamo Dome for their bowl game. So they're not going to be intimidated if they were going to be intimidated by going to you know, Texas San Antonio. But you got a Texas San Antonio team last year, the most veteran team. I, be, I believe they brought back 20 starters last year. Everybody was on. I remember first mm -hmm. week, oh, they're going to be great. They underachieved last year. They played Arizona, Arizona very good last week. But I'm not a big Arizona fan this year. Their defense isn't very good. And when Scooby Wright went out, and I just love saying Scooby, <laughs> when Scooby Wright went out, this Arizona defense just faltered. And obviously he's not going to be here this week for Arizona. But, you know, I'm taking it with a grain of salt with this team. Five returning starters. I think Kansas State gets it done. The line's gone down. I think it opened, what, 21's down to 17 now? Mm -hmm. I'm a buyer at 17 or less. Yeah, the backup came in last week, and they really kept it vanilla. I After mean, two I, plays, yeah, he had to come in. He, yeah. he only, I think it was 9 of 18. I mean, he was 50%, mm -hmm. 140 some yards and a TD pass, but he really didn't go downfield, and they didn't do it much to put him to the test. But now he's got a full week of being the starting quarterback taking the snaps and being prepared to, to play. And they played last week during the week. So they played Thursday last week or Friday. So they had an extra day uh, of practice as well for Kansas State. So I, I agree with you. I think he'll be better this week. And I think that there is a natural overreaction. Everybody, the minute there's a quarterback out, you, you see the public, you know, oh, this team's dead, this and that. But there's always somebody that's, you know, maybe not as good, but is going to be capable. And we always say that with the injured player theory, that first game, the rest of the Kansas State team is going to play at a different level because they know that they lost their starting quarterback. They need to make up for it. And as you said, add that to the poor performance and Snyder drilling them in practice this week. That's a good formula for this team to be focused and get the I, job. Done. I got to ask you one thing because Hubner's never started at this level he's never started at a high school level from what I read and you know Ertz was apparently not supposed to be that much better as you said it was mm -hmm. kind of up in the air who they were going to start if this was on the road against Alabama and he's making his first ever start yeah. that's one thing but because it is Texas San Antonio and you don't have that over your head as you're trying to go to sleep at night all week long as you're practicing finally as a starter I think it's better to be playing on the road at Texas San Antonio than for Hubner to be making his first start in front of the home fans in Manhattan, Kansas. I think there's a little bit less pressure to be starting in this particular situation than if it was a home game. And again, we're throwing that out. If there's, you know, Ohio State, if it's Alabama, right. it's one thing. But it is Texas San Antonio. I think that helps out a little bit. And again, you know, Snyder is so unbelievable at rallying the troops and having guys, as you were kind of leaning to, of picking up the slack when a leader is out that I think they can get away with it this year and San Antonio took a few bumps last week. Yeah, they definitely did. And when you only bring back five starters, you don't have a lot of depth and people are playing looking at that's a one advantage we have being that we've done this for so long. We don't overreact and you tend to overreact when you see a team. Hey, they almost knocked off Arizona. Well, you have to look beyond the box score. 
All right, Brian, your best bet is to take Kansas State and lay the points. Brian, you've got a big game going on Sunday. Tell the listeners real quick uh, what they can look forward yeah, to. Yeah, I've, I've got a game going on Sunday. I love this game. I've had this game circled. I did not release any preseason football. I didn't want to deal with that. It's, it's too much for me to know. When you're releasing the preseason, you've got to be up to date on everything. And I stuck to baseball and have a really good baseball season. So this is our first NFL release of the season. And it is a big 5% play, and we've done very good on these plays. 19 to 10 now on Game of the Week, Game of the Month, Game of the Year plays. Game of the Month, our AFC Game of the Month goes Sunday. And you want to get on this soon because I expect this line to move. All right. Check out all of our other videos that we did this week, guys, at wagertalk.com, and you'll find them under the podcast video section. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back with more.